next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do some very quick basic vignetting. And vignetting in Photoshop is a significantly more powerful than most other tools. As you know, vignetting is usually the darkening of the outer side of the image, or sometimes brightening. Sometimes there's white vignetting too. The easiest way to do that in Photoshop is you get the rectangular selection tool and you draw a selection like so. And then we'll want to refine the mask to feather it, so which is under Command Option R, or it's under Refine Edge under the Select menu, or Control Alt R on a PC. Once I do that, I'm going to change the feather ratio, and I'm going to change it to be about one tenth of my total picture size. And I can sort of look and see it visually, but I do generally like the belief that my picture size is about 5,000 pixels wide, so I probably want it near the 500 point. If you're working with a smaller or a larger picture, you'll need to adjust it. So I'm going to set mine to about 515. You can see it's a smooth gradient all the way around. The traditional way of doing this is that you add a new layer and you create a mask on that layer by clicking the mask button. And this will create a mask which is white in the middle and dark in the outside. I can look at the mask by hitting Alt and clicking on the mask. And you can see it is a nice vignette. The middle of the object is, is white and the outer edges are fading off to black. Now, to use that we have to actually invert it because a mask we actually want it to be dark in the middle so that the image isn't affected and only the borders are. So I'm going to hit Command I or Control I which will invert my mask and then go back to the base layer. And I'm going to hit Shift F5 to fill it. It's also under Edit Fill. And I'm going to fill it with black. You have all these choices and you can fill it with black for example. And then we get the vignette that we were sort of looking for. Note that we can change the opacity to change how much effect the vignette actually has if we slide the opacity up and down for that layer. Now, but we can do much more powerful things than that. If I control click on the mask, I can create a new layer, create a new mask, which will copy the mask by using control click. And I can fill it with another color. Let's say that I want to make a different colored vignette. I can select any color that I want. Let's say we want to make sort of a yellow vignette for some reason or another. Probably it's not going to look good in this picture, but that's okay. I can hit Shift F5 and I can fill it with the foreground color instead. And now we've created a yellow vignette, which is going to look pretty strange in this picture, but you can get the idea and it stands out prominently so you can see what I'm doing. It's more likely that you'll want to do something much more refined. Here's the deal. I rarely do square vignettes. It's much more interesting to do a vignette which is shaped according to your picture. So for example, I'm going to create a new vignette and instead I'm going to use the lasso tool rather than the rectangular tool. Sure we have all these other ones available to, as well like the elliptical tool and single rows and things like that, but the lasso tool will let me shape according to my picture, which I find much more interesting. Let's say we want to shape it according to this wine glass. So we want to highlight this singular glass. I actually don't need to worry about being too careful. And actually I'm going to hold down shift and let's get the stem as well. So that we're going to try and highlight just one object in our image and sort of darken everything else. Oops. There, now we have a selection around our primary glass. And I might want to do a better job if I was doing this for production use, but this is fine for today. Now I'm going to refine my mask. I'm going to hit Control Alt R or Command Option R. Feather it according to the same sort of conventions. I want a fairly high feather. It gets really, really dense in numbers to the right. In the beginning, it's just changing the numbers a little bit. And as you slide this slider to the right hand side, it gets very dense. I'm going to feather it all the way up into a little bit less than 500 this time to about 430. And now I have a feathered selection, which you really can't see until you look at it in a mask form. So I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to add a mask to the layer. And now, just like before, now I have a mask which is in the shape of my selection. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill that layer with, we'll do black again this time. 
and there you go. Now we have a mask which is very carefully selecting just what we want. And I can refine it so that I'm really calling attention to that singular glass. I can turn the mask on and off, and you can see that I'm focusing down my view into that single object in my frame that I was most interested in. And you can go refine the mask later. You can paint white and black onto the mask to pull in or push out other parts. And I can even hit Shift F5 and reverse the mask. I can fill it with white to see what a white mask would look like. And really kind of do that bright, glowy, wedding kind of look where uh, you, you pull in a lot of light to make it look much more elegant. Here's another tip for you. I rarely use a filled layer. I actually find that using a curves layer is just as fascinating. So if I hit Control and I click on my mask, I'm going to copy my mask back into my selection. I'm going to create a new curves layer instead. Now with my curves layer, I'm going to turn off the original mask and click on the curve. With my curves layer, I can darken everything in sort of a much more subtle way. Maybe I want to do a white mask. Well, I can reset my curve and I can go upwards instead and sort of get that glowy kind of effect. And both of them work. I can, I can switch back and forth between the curves-based mask and the white overlay kind of mask. I think you'll see that the, the curves one is a little bit more subtle and I can control it a little bit more. It takes a little more practice though, but I highly recommend trying it. I encourage you to experiment with different shapes in your image too. So if I turn this off and I'm going to look at just maybe this horizontal line across these glasses. Maybe that's the area I want to highlight. Rather than a vertical singular glass, maybe I should highlight this whole row of glasses instead and, and emphasize that. No? I'm going to refine my mask. Control Alt R, Command Option R. Feather it like crazy up into the 400s. Click OK. I'm going to create my curves tool again, which will create the mask on it. And a lot of times I actually start messing with something before I realize, oh, I forgot to invert it. So, you know, I'm going to hit Control I or Command I to invert that mask because that's what I'm selected on right now. And then keep working. <laughs> I, I forget it all the time myself. So, you know, do I want it to go white? Do I want it to go dark? And now I'm emphasizing that row of, of wine rather than uh, the stems and taking out some of the detail before. It's where you want to concentrate your viewer on. Where is the important part of the image that you want them to really pay attention to? Hopefully this gives you some ideas and some things to play with when you're doing advanced in vignetting in Photoshop. It's much more powerful to do in Photoshop than any other tool because you can use selection-based vignetting. Much, much more powerful. All of these layers that you are used to using in Photoshop, such as even a photo filter, for example. If I only want to do warming of part of it, I can add a warming filter for just the top, or a yellow filter, or a deep red filter. All of these options are available to you in a mask if you know how to do proper vignetting of certain particular areas. So vignette is really just a mechanism for changing the areas of an image, especially outside your main area of focus. And you do that using a mask in Photoshop. And the most powerful way to do that is using the selection tool. Any ability you have to create a selection in Photoshop can very quickly be turned into a vignette. Don't restrict yourself to just the black and white ones. Those are traditional, and honestly, that's what I do most of the time. But, you know, leave yourself some power to, to really experiment and play. If you don't want too much white, remember in a Curves tool, if you're using the Curves tool, you can pull down the right-hand side to get a darker vignette and, and remove some of the whites by pulling down that right-hand side. Have fun and go play. That's the best way to create new photos and new art.